Hey guys, it's Wednesday, 13th of July. It's Nolan here. We've just sent out our watch list to uh, our members, and I thought I would do you guys a little video looking at some of the charts on that watch list and potentially what may happen. Um, so let's start off with the dollar index. So, dollar index is very, very bullish market at the moment as you can see on this uh, lovely weekly chart from actually from down at this low here january uh 21 because that was the low point there from there that's actually where the uptrend began as we moved up impulse correction and then moved up with smaller corrections another correction there look and at the moment we are in an impulse phase of buying um, something I did for the watch list was I drew a fib actually from this consolidation here. So we had an impulse up, we had a consolidation or correction, and then we had another move up. This was the low here. So what I did was I've drawn a fib from the start of the impulse here to the end of the impulse here. This is how you draw fibs from the start to an, of an impulse to the end of an impulse. Uh, we can see that price corrected into the 50% retracement level. So all that means is that price retraced 50% of this move. Okay, so whatever this move was, this moved half of that distance. And then we've seen the next impulse to the upside. Now using fibs, we can actually use these extension levels, this one and this one, as potential targets. Now, the minus 27% FIB has already been hit. And you can see we are still pushing to the upside. And potentially, we might see the minus 61.8% FIB. So that's right about 109.50. We might see a little bit of pullback. Maybe come and test that minus 27% uh, FIB there before we push up. But we could be heading towards there. So we may still see some buyers in the market for, you know, USD. So you know the saying, well, you may not know the saying, the trend is your friend until the bend in the end. So um, yeah, basically you keep trading the market in the the trend direction, the bigger direction until you are proved wrong because eventually there will be a point where the market turns around. Okay, but at the moment we are in a, a buying phase on the dollar index and that is the bigger trend. Okay, buyers are in charge of this market. So with that in mind, we may see even further uh, moves down on Euro, not potentially like big moves because it's not uh, too far to go between this 107.91, almost 108, up to 109.50. There's not too much to go where price may start to reverse. We don't know. But if the dollar index has got a little bit left to push, then you would expect Euro USD to have a little bit further push downwards. Now I've found this uh, nice little daily channel here where we've got to one, two, three, four touches here at resistance and we've got one, two, three touches. Maybe even include that one. It didn't really touch though. So we'll, we'll call it three at support there. And price could drop down towards the bottom of this structure here before we actually see um, buyers come in and push this up again to the top of this channel for a bigger correction. So potentially a little bit more to go and then we'd be looking for buyers to come in and then looking for that move there. Okay. Now in the last video that we sent out, I think I, I did the last video. I, the, the title of the video was, I think it was something to do with Euro, uh, Euro USD next stop parity. Um, I think something like that anyway. Uh, so parity means when, for this particular pair, when one Euro is equal to one US dollar. Okay, so that would be here. And lo and behold, uh, I think it was yesterday, pretty much on the nose. If I, yeah, if you look here where it's got L, that means the low. And if I put my cursor over the candle, you can see the low was 1.0000. Uh, zero. So, um, yeah, it actually hit parity 
on the nose. So well done if you um, got to short uh, Euro USD. I think I was looking for a little bit more of a correction actually, maybe back up into uh, in the video. I think I was talking about price potentially coming back to test these lows, then looking for shorts, it just never happened. As you can see, price pushed down, it continued to push down with smaller corrections. So if you did get into that, absolutely brilliant. Well done. Uh, I take my hat off to you. Fantastic. Uh, but yeah, I'm just glad that, you know, we got uh, the prediction correct. So prediction now is price could potentially have a little bit further to go here. So what I'm going to be looking for is on this four hour, you can see this little bit of a, a correction here. I can see the support at that big number. Okay, one. So a close below there, an H4 close, maybe an hourly close, depending on what you're looking for. That could be the um, indication of that further move to the downside coming to have a little interaction with the bottom of uh, the channel and then potentially look for buyers so you know it could be you know anywhere down 99 maybe we we'll just have to wait and see but it does look like we could see further shorts it's certainly not um, I don't think lungs are too far away, but we have to continue with the trend until, you know, proven wrong. So you can still see, can't you, on this four hourly. Movement is to the downside. There's no change of cycle there. You know, if you want to get long um, from where it is now, we need to see that change of cycle, uh, which we haven't seen. You know, whether you can actually see the higher highs, higher lows, whether you want to put uh, moving averages on there and look for a moving average cross, you know, that's down to yourselves. Uh, but yeah, potentially further shorts if we can close below that uh, parity level there. And we're seeing, you know, similar things on, let's put, um, I'm just going to save that. We've got pound USD. We've got this falling wedge pattern here, as you can see. And maybe just another little push down. Come and test this support here before we see buyers come into the market. So very, very similar picture if you like to uh, euro usd you know we are at some pretty extreme levels here for pound usd as you can see on this monthly chart so we're at 119 144 but you know price here this was covid it came down to 115 here this goes back to 2016 it was a, a low of 116 496 so this still could move down you know don't rule it out okay one thing i have noticed about traders is they try to pick bottoms um and the safest way really is just to trade with the trend let the bottom of the move or the top of the move, it would be the bottom in this case, let it form, let the market change cycle and then trade after a correction, okay? When you start to, when you try to pick bottoms or tops of trades, more often than not, you will be wrong because more often than not, the trend goes on longer than you're expecting you'll get support and resistance broken you'll end up losing your money you're trying to you're trying to catch the top or the bottom once twice three times market or just swallow your money best thing to do is to wait for that change of cycle and then look for a correction and then look for a setup just my advice take it or leave it up to you uh so yeah potentially uh, another move down here for pound usd um kiwi very very similar you know another channel um, let me just show you support support look we've got this 6,000 level here uh, you know it's potentially that's where we could come and test before we start to see the dollar weakness and the money being invested or or re or re um or moved if you like into the risk currencies and and we see that dollar that dollar weakness so potentially 6,000 is a level for kiwi usd to watch as you can see on the four hour well, from here, actually, it's just a bearish market, but this is respecting this trend line very, very nicely. On H4, we're literally testing that trend line at the moment. So who knows? There could be a, a sell setup here if you see something which uh, you like, Evening Star maybe. I don't know, but uh, yeah, we're testing it there. Obviously, if we break to the upside, then potentially 
we could just be moving to test this trend line here. If I just show you, which is the top of this structure, a little move and we could come down. You know, that's 62 there. Well, we've actually seen a test actually, haven't we? We've broke and we've come into the 62 there and we've rejected. So we might not see 62 tested again, but we may do have a little look out for that if we break out of this trend line. But otherwise, yeah, it's still short this market as far as I'm concerned until proven otherwise. Okay. Um, so yeah, dollar strength until we see that change of sentiment. Um, I'm going to show you gold actually. Gold is a very interesting chart. Now traditionally, gold and silver have their, you know, well silver certainly has its best month in July. I, I can't actually think um, if gold has its best month in July, I can't remember, but it has a decent month on average. Not as decent as silver though. Normally silver will, the gains on silver, about 4.995% roughly traditionally. Uh, and uh, gold is um, kind of lags behind. Uh, you know, we can see that from the the gold silver chart at the moment. We would expect, you know, we've got this structure here. We would expect this to as re resistance to to sell off or to to move down, which means silver would be uh, gold would be weaker than silver. Um, so yeah, we are looking actively for more actively, I'd say for silver buys than, than, than gold buys, to be honest with you. But talking about gold buys, well, have a little look at this chart on the weekly. Um, because for me, there's a couple of areas which are interesting. Okay. There's a couple of areas now. We've got this low here, which is around about, it's a, a little bit higher, but 1720. Okay, the low on this candle was about 1721. Um, and we have come into that uh, level, and we've seen a, today anyway, uh, a bullish candle. Nothing, nothing amazing, you know, no change of sentiment, you know, nothing like that. But the level that really, really does interest me on gold is, okay, is this level here. You can see it quite clearly, can't you? Look at these lows, all on 1680. We've got support here. This is a very, very interesting level. And if I'm going to buy gold, this is really when I, where I want to look to buy from. Okay, 1680. I'm going to put that alert in right now. Okay, 16. I'll, I'll put it a little bit higher. So the low on this candle was what? 1677. Just want to have a look at some of these candle lows. 16. Yeah, 1677, 1677, 1676. So, yeah, we might even be looking at 16. I'm going to put the alert in at 1678. So a little bit higher than that, 1677. Um, this would be the ultimate level for me. Now, you've got a couple of choices, depending on what type of trader you are. You can have your alert set, and then you can wait for your alert to go off, if it goes off, and then start to look for changes of cycle, okay, on smaller time frames, because literally, gold could literally just pop into that level and you know, very, very quickly and just as quickly move up. Gold, you know, can be a very, very volatile market. Okay, so <clears throat> let's actually have um, a little look at uh, this low here. I just want to see actually what happened on the smaller time frame. I've not actually looked at this, so this is kind of, you know, live if you like. Okay, so I'm guessing it was this one here. Yeah, you can see, look, boom. Big old move down into support, and then we get buyers come in in the next hour. So, you know, you could look for that if you like a big move down, then a, a bullish candle, maybe a morning star on 15 minutes, something like that. You know, have a little think about okay, what if price comes down to the 1680 level 
and rejects or 1677 you know what is my game plan going to be what am i going to be looking for so you can see boom big push down buy a candle inside candle breaks the high you know maybe you'd be looking to buy above there stop below the low um now another way or another you know way you could potentially look to trade this is well it's a buy limit and again this will be personal choice you know because when you're placing a limit order what you're actually doing is you're predicting the market will basically come into that price stop reverse and then go in the direction of your trade so looking at these lows maybe you'd want to think about and you'd have to think about it a little buy limit we'll say 1670 a lot of those lows were 1677 points something so i'm just going to put 1678 okay whole number stop well that's going to be personal choice literally you could have a very very tight stop if you wanted to um so literally you know i'm just putting this out there 1665 okay let me just look at the low of this candle here the low 1670 okay so let's put it let's just put it at 1670 um okay i'm oh, sorry 1665 yeah that's low enough in fact boom so what you're hoping then is for price to literally come down into there and what you're hoping is for there's loads of uh you know buyers at that price there's lots of entries and lots of um buyers wanting to get at that price they you know they know that this is a good price and history tells us that you know we look to the left so we know you know what that's how we get support and resistance you know that we we see how prices reacted around certain levels so a little buy limit there and then it depends you know do you want to hold on to it then or what your target's going to be i mean something i would say is there's a nice little level there about 1750 i can see this tip of the wick breaking through there and here look a little bit of support there so 1750 doesn't seem like um a bad a, a, a bad area to take profit now whether that's your first target second target i don't know but what i would suggest is actually coming out before the big number okay always come out before a big number so <clears throat> we'll say uh we'll say 80 actually you know 74 1749 80 before 1750 um i i like to place targets before those big numbers because there's likely to be um entries there so Could we go a little bit higher on that? We possibly could, you know. Let me just let me just have another little look at that. Now we'll leave it there. That's a you know that's a five and a half percent. If you want to drop it down a little bit more, you can do. It's a five to one trade. Okay, you're risking a couple of hundred quid on that. Potentially, you could make a thousand pounds if it works out. So it does depend on what type of trader you are, though. Okay, so have a little think. You may not even trade gold that you may be trading gold for the first time now who knows you may you may want to have a little look at this video and think yeah okay well that doesn't sound like uh, a bad idea a little buy limit there now if you are going to take it don't over risk just because i've said this is going to happen doesn't mean that it will okay i am no clairvoyant i'm just looking on the chart i'm seeing what's happened here previously and I can see these wicks down. The price movement on gold can be very, very quick. And literally a buy limit is in theory um, really the, the best way into the market because literally your, your entry is there ready and waiting for when price comes down, okay? Have a little think about your stop level. You don't have to go where I've suggested. You could go lower, you could go tighter if you really, really want to. Obviously the tighter that is, the more your reward to risk. Um, and yeah, so again, that's gonna be personal, personal choice, but it looks pretty decent to me um, for a little buy limit there 
Um, one more chart I've missed actually, dollar Swiss. Keep your eye on dollar Swiss because if we're going to see, if we're going to see um, a little bit more strength in the dollar, I'll just show you this chart. For some reason, I had a it doesn't really matter. I had a, a base here as well. There's a there's a range potentially in play here. We've got uh, you know resistance here, roundabout parity at one. We've got support down here. Potentially, uh, price is going to push up back into parity. We can see very very strong movement of buying. Okay, and at the moment we've had two candle correction. So yeah. Big movement of buyers, little correction. Watch for buyers to come in again if they do. Watch for buyers to come in again, and you can target up here at resistance. Now, if we put this on the smaller time frame, maybe maybe the hourly. Okay, you just can see that lovely, lovely momentum here. We've got some small corrections, impulses, small corrections. Now we've got a little bit of a bigger correction. That can often happen when we have a big move. We'll see a, a little bit of a bigger correction. What I'd be looking for was a a break or is a break of this counter trend line here bullish close above there would potentially tell us that those impulses sorry those buyers are in charge of the market once more and we could be heading up into parity so keep your eye on this ctl keep your eye on buyers to see if they do come into this market okay and we've also potentially got a little bit Further to go downwards on Euro USD, Pound USD, Ki Kiwi USD. Um, so just you know, have a little look, see what you think. Um, is there a particular market that you resonate with more than others? If so, you know, go with it. Simple as that. So that's my thoughts on some of the charts in the market right now. Um, Drop us a comment in the uh, in the comments below the video. What do you think? Have you got totally different analysis, totally different ideas for some of the charts I've been looking at? You know, let us know. Um, give the video a like if you can. Share it as well if you know any like-minded traders such as uh, such as yourselves who may be interested in the. Um, the information so like share and please make sure you are subscribed so you get uh, notifications of any future videos as soon as they are uploaded so from me nolan and the team on this lovely wednesday evening here in the uk i am going to sign off and trade safe guys and i'll see you in the next video bye